It brings me great honor to be able to present to you tonight another story written by my dear friend, Stressed Writer. Ladies and gentlemen, please sit back and relax as I recite to you the tale of Rum and Roses. Featuring the ever so talented voice work of returning guest Dr. Creepin and making her first ever appearance on this channel, Duchess Dark. Bartender, one Manhattan, please. The bartender turned to address the silky voice that had entered the quiet bar from the rainy darkness outside. The soft ringing of a bell was heard as the door swung shut and a woman sauntered towards him, her heels clicking on the hardwood floor. The light from above the bar cast a dim glow onto the polished mahogany countertop. Light glinting off the many liquor bottles on the shelves along the back. The woman passed by the only other patron in the room, an older man sitting by himself, nursing his beer at one of the oak tables near the door. The bartender noticed that the smell of stale booze was replaced with the scent of roses as the woman approached reminding him for a brief moment of his grandmother's garden, blooming rose bushes flourishing in a light spring breeze. She shed her dark mink coat and draped it along the tall stool beside her as she sat across from the bartender. He turned away and began making her drink. One Manhattan coming right up he announced as he measured the bourbon and placed it in the tin. Soft jazz piano music filled the air from the speakers overhead, complementing the thundering rain outside. He recognized it from his days in high school band. The fragrance of dark coffee, he believed the name was. He added vermouth and bitters, scooping ice into a glass and chilling it for the cocktail, adding some ice to the tin and beginning to stir. He at last glanced over at the woman across the bar. Dark hair and statuesque features gleamed over top a snug maroon dress with lipstick to match. He noticed that her hands were covered in decorative and valuable rings of all shapes and sizes polished gemstones of various colors shining in the dim bar light. Looking a little closer, he could see two thin scars running along her neck, beginning in the hollow of her throat, wrapping around the back of her head, and disappearing behind her jawline. She caught his eye and placed her hand over her throat, playing with a small locket that hung on a silver chain around her neck. He looked away and continued with her drink, dumping the ice from the glass and straining the alcohol into it. He placed a cherry into the cocktail and slid it over to where she was sitting. For a time, there was nothing but the quiet sounds of the piano and the drumming of the rain while he cleaned some glasses and the woman sipped her drink. The bartender decided to strike up a conversation. So, what's got you here in the dead of night, miss? He inquired, drying his hands and smoothing out his collared blue shirt, leaning up against the bar. Getting new customers this late at night, especially stunning young women, wasn't very common. Business, she replied, placing her cocktail on the counter. And please, call me Bella. Uh, Joseph, he added, introducing himself. Joseph turned away to continue cleaning the glasses. He paused for a second and then turned back to Bella. 
What sort of business brings you to a small bar at this time of night, if you don't mind me asking? Bella took a moment to finish her drink a pensive look on her face before waving a hand at the older man sitting by the door. Do you see that man over there? She asked. Joseph looked over at the man whom he recognized as Howard, a regular. The poor man made a habit of drinking late ever since his wife passed a few months earlier. Before her death, Howard was always cheerful, talking about his wife whenever he stopped at the bar for a drink. Joseph enjoyed his company during his evening shifts, but now he was quiet, sitting slumped over his beer, doing nothing but taking the occasional sip from his glass. Age and grief seemed to weigh heavy on his shoulders, etching deep lines into his face. He wore an ancient leather jacket with three missing buttons and a small hole above the breast pocket. You mean Howard? Joseph wondered. Yes, Howard. He is my business, said Bella picking her cherry from her glass and biting into its flesh. Joseph gave her a puzzled expression. She leaned across the bar, her silver locket swaying on its chain. Joseph noticed a tiny, intricate skull was etched into the cover. Howard is going to die, she whispered smiling at Joseph like she was sharing a secret. The statement caught him off guard. What do you mean? Joseph stuttered. Bella just smiled and chewed on her cherry. You mean that Howard is going to die? Joseph asked in a hushed tone, looking over at him. Before Bella could respond, Howard spoke up, facing Joseph. Joseph, my boy, who are you talking to? He asked, a bewildered expression on his face. What? What do you mean? I'm talking to- Joseph trailed off. Bella turned and grinned at Howard. Howard, darling, just enjoy your drink, all right? I'll be with you shortly. Howard didn't seem to register that Bella had spoken, his eyes still fixed on Joseph, but he went back to his beer all the same. Joseph looked from Howard to Bella and back again, incredulous. Anyway, to answer your question, yes, he is. She resumed placing the stem of her cherry back into the glass and cleaning her fingers with the paper napkin beside her. How? Joseph asked in disbelief. A heart attack, she said with a sly smile, placing a crisp $20 bill on the counter. How, how do you know that he's going to die? Joseph whispered staring at her, then at Howard. Bella said nothing as she got up from her chair and donned her coat, wrapping it around herself, tightening it at her waist, and turning away. Joseph watched as she walked towards the door, stopping just beside Howard. She turned and looked to Joseph. She grinned and put her fingers to her lips as if she was about to blow him a kiss, but instead placed them onto Howard's shoulder with a small flourish and then continued towards the door. At first, nothing happened. Then Howard hunched forward, clutching his chest. He wheezed as he continued to grab at his checkered shirt falling from his chair and landing with a thud. He kicked around as his breaths got shorter and shorter and shorter and his movement slowed. Joseph stood for a moment in shock, 
before scrambling to dig his phone out of his pocket, dialing 911. He looked up to see Bella in the doorway. She gave him a polite little wave before disappearing into the night, leaving nothing but the sweet scent of roses in her wake.